a chat, a Google, a Google pickle. A Google pickle. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. He called it a Google pickle. And I was like, <laughs> All right. Okay, you've been alive. along too long. Oh, it was so good. Guys, uh, welcome to our public services committee meeting. Um, this time I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, community members who desires to submit an oral general public comment or an oral comment on a specific agenda item can submit your request to speak via the following email, oralpublickcomment.gov. All residents, all requests to speak must be submitted before the conclusion of the public participation portion of each agenda item. I will orally announce the deadline for each item after the, after the item is called for consideration. Please observe a three minute limit for communications and once your, your call is connected, we request that you state your name and city of residence. For the record, communications from the public. The portion of the agenda is intended for general public comment only on items within the council's jurisdiction that are not listed elsewhere on the agenda. Please note that state law prohibits the city council from discussing or taking advantage or taking action on these items. Please observe a three minute limit for communication. And once your call is connected, we request that you state your name and city of residence for the record. For the public participating telephonically, please dial star nine or press the raise hand button if participating via the Zoom app to raise your hand so that the city clerk is aware that you have submitted a request for oral comment. I will give you at least a minute warning before the request period is closed. Ms. Ramirez, did we receive any written comments from the public? We have not received any written comments from the public at this moment. Thank you. Ms. Duarte, did we receive any requests for oral comment? We have not received any requests for oral comment as of yet, Mayor. Okay, so they are on the 60 second uh, warning here to call in if they have something they'd like to say. Mayor, it has been a minute. We did not receive any requests. Thank you very much. Telephonic public participation is now closed. Going on to agenda item number one, update regarding our July 4th celebration and some of our um, summer concerts. For the public participating telephonically, please dial star nine or press the raise hand button if participating via the Zoom app to raise your hand so that the city clerk is aware that you have submitted a request for oral comment. You have one minute from now to submit your request. Mr. Loss, will you uh, please give us an update? Pleasure to see you all uh, here virtually. Um, just want to say good afternoon uh, to you, our Mayor, uh, Mayor Steiner, uh, members of the public, uh, service committee, and everyone who's watching from home. Um, I'm here today to present a, a quick overview on the impact of uh, COVID-19 on the city's larger uh, summer events. We got that uh, presentation up and running there. There we go. And... Uh -oh. All right. Okay, next slide. Uh, so the, the big question everyone is asking right now is, can the show go on? Um, our team has been dragging our feet, uh, holding out hope uh, that we would be able to return uh, to program uh, with the bank. 
still we are largely dependent on the decisions of the the fed uh the state and the county as uh to what we can do when it comes to uh, larger assemblies had our uh, ups and downs with the fork this year. Uh, originally, we had a vendor issue uh, that forced us to look at rescheduling uh, the fireworks show to another day. And our team has worked tirelessly behind the scenes, and we were finally able to secure a great fireworks display and an amazing band for Saturday, July 4th. Um, still, I don't think anyone anticipated a pandemic would uh, derail us uh, once more here. Um, in addition to limitations on gatherings, we now have uh, unanticipated costs with vendors hiking up their rates for porta potties and sinks, uh, the potential need for uh, protective and sanitizing equipment, and the very sad news that longtime sponsor Monster Energy is pulling their stage use uh, throughout the area uh, due to the health crisis. Uh, we also realize that the health concerns amongst the community, volunteers, and our own staff uh, could affect overall attendance. At this time, uh, Corona Rotary, thank you, Corona Rotary, uh, is our only returning sponsor. And again, we can't thank them enough for their commitment to the parade and this holiday. Is, uh, what are other cities uh, doing when it comes to the four? An informal survey we took part of uh, through the California Rec Park and Recreation Society found that out of 48 cities, 65% have uh, canceled all or a portion of their events. 12% uh, are seeking council input, like we are here uh, today. And 23% are just holding on, uh, hoping that something changes and they can, they can proceed as planned. Uh, of course, cities are also exploring other uh, options like drive-in events or virtual content. Uh, but with the uncertainty of the moment, a large-scale um, large scale event is just you know, really a moving target for us. Like the fourth, we have uh, our concerts. We have an amazing lineup uh, for the summer. In fact, we were so confident uh, we planned to expand uh, into a fifth night uh, before everything happened. Uh, concerts are faced with the same challenges as the fourth, uh, with restrictions on large gatherings, um, health implications, lack of sponsorship, and uh, whether or not we will even see the public uh, come out to our events this year. Uh, the pandemic has really led uh, to cancellations of many events uh, throughout the, the state here. So we're seeing this affecting music festivals, concerts, cultural events, uh, county fairs, and so much more. Uh, cities throughout the state are really having to make tough decisions when it comes to their own summer programming. So the, the Library and Recreation Services Department is um, never one to give up. Uh, next slide there. We can't pull off the 4th of July event uh, this year. We're hoping we can bring digital content uh, maybe to the arena. Uh, social media is an amazing platform and we'd love to put some uh, celebratory videos and content out there. Um, we have discussed ideas like a virtual parade, military tribute, and positive messages uh, that we could put out there. Uh, we'd also like to organize a home decorating contest. Uh, perhaps residents can decorate their homes in the good old red, white, and blue. Uh, this is a great way for the community to put their uh, patriotism on display and remind each other um, that we're still here for each other. Quick presentation here today, um, but I'm sure as you gathered by the tone of my presentation, um, we have had to make some hard choices regarding these festivities. Um, given the current circumstances and with concern for the health and safety of our residents, uh, we are recommending, unfortunately, uh, that we cancel the 4th of July festivities for this year. Uh, we cancel the summer concerts uh, just the same and that we explore um, maybe some smaller patriotic uh, and remote uh, summer time activities residents can engage in in a safe way. Um, this does represent a savings to the city of $141,000 there. Um, but I do want to add on a personal note that this is a very hard determination uh, for the Library and Recreation Services team. Uh, the four concerts and all of our summertime programs are a highlight of the season and a tradition for our residents. We desperately miss our community and we want nothing more than to throw our doors open and welcome everyone back. This might not be our best season, uh, but when the doors open, we will be there for you. Uh, this does conclude my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Jason. Did anybody have any questions for Jason before we go to, go to the public? Yeah, um, I have some questions and or comments. Um, so 4th of July is my favorite holiday. So as much as it hurts, it seems like it makes 
to cancel the event just because of the uncertain time, uncertainty, and knowing about, you know, how large of a group is allowed to assemble. Um, you know, if we continued to hold out hope, we could find out a few weeks before that it was going to not be able to happen. So I unfortunately um, would be in support of canceling um, with the idea of moving forward with um, other ideas such as broadcasting virtual content. Um, I know we're working on a short timeline, but we could put out a press release asking for city residents to submit videos of patriotic content, such as filming their family, singers, bands, dance performances, and putting together some kind of virtual digital like talent show, but patriotic themed. Um, I'm not sure if we have the ability to do it. Um, I'm sure someone in your department is amazing. Um, but it would be fun to put together and broadcast maybe one to two hours of the best submissions followed by a virtual, like a professional virtual fireworks show. Um, the cost um, for the staff putting together that video and reviewing applications, but obviously that's a huge savings than the actual event. Um, so it'd sort of be like an old fashioned talent show type thing. Um, I also loved the idea of the patriotic home decorating contest. Um, we could honor winners in different categories, maybe at one of our parks and recreation commission meetings. Um, perhaps even the commission could discuss category ideas at next commission meeting. Um, I know that the 4th of July is our largest community event and having a sense of community togetherness is so important in these times, but I think it is crucial to find ways that we can still provide that to the residents, even if it means virtually. Um, so I really appreciate all of the hard work that the staff has done. Um, and I too am so sad and disappointed. It's my personal favorite holiday that I attend every year, um, but I would definitely like to move forward with providing some kind of community events and togetherness. So I just wanted to, and then with regards to the summer concert, sorry, um, I'm definitely disappointed at that, but um, you know, I'm not sure how that would translate to virtually, you know, my idea for the 4th of July would be free because it would be residents submitting their own personal videos. I'm not sure, you know, that the expense of having um, professional bands perform for summer concerts would um, be worth the virtual aspect of that. That's my comments on that. All right, thank you, Elizabeth. Anybody else have some comments before we go to the public? I do, I have a few yes. thoughts. Um, I agree, I'm with Elizabeth. This is my favorite Corona tradition. I grew up going to these events and it's by far the time when I feel most connected to my fellow Coronans. And I'm just, I'm really sad. I was really hoping that we would be able to find um, a way I don't know. I was just hoping that by now we'd have a different forecast. Um, I was also part of the meeting where we were discussing the fact that it was, we were having difficulty securing a, um, a fireworks operator. And so I want to really commend the team for going above and beyond to, you know, find different ways to keep it within budget and find someone to operate. And then when you finally succeeded, this is, um, this is unfortunate COVID, you know, came into all of our lives. So thank you for all of your efforts. I, you know, I wonder if, if it's possible to, you know, book those, uh, book the provider for 2021 so that we can maybe lock in that right now and, and for sure have someone that, um, that can, you know, meet our, our safety standards and be in our budget for next year's 4th of July parade. Um, but I, Anyway, I'm not sure if that's possible, but I do want to commend you for your efforts for making it happen because even that looked, um, it was a big hurdle. And 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 anyway, you weren't sidetracked by that, but you were sidetracked. We were all sidetracked by COVID-19. I really love the brainstorming and I and of the alternative ways of connecting because it's true. What this does for us is that it allows us at least in one big way a year to all go to the park together and have our families, you know, interact and spend one nice evening under the stars, under fireworks. It's just a very beautiful way to connect with our community. So um, I like where this is heading. I would, I would love to see what other ideas maybe the Parks and Rec Commission can come up with um, to, to engage our community remotely, because I think that there's probably a, even more opportunities there. Um, and, you know, maybe even asking our residents and seeing what ways can we connect? What ideas do you have? Um, what would you like to see and how could you participate? 
Um, but yes, I, I like that uh, direction. And as for the concerts in the green, it's also another one of those amazing summer activities that you all put together for all of our residents here. And I, you know, I'm not sure um, as well about the cost. I wonder if, you know, there'd be royalties involved in, you know, a lot of these are cover bands. And so would we be getting into um, some additional costs because it's no longer a live cover? Um, so I'm not sure that, um, you know, we need to really dig in further for alternatives on the, for the summer concerts, but I would love to see some more thinking, some more brainstorming around 4th of July, because I think that this could be a really fun thing for folks um, and, and a good way to kind of get everyone to jump in and, and be in this together during a tough time. So thank you for your presentation. Very good. Ms. Ramirez, did we receive any written comments from the public? Uh, yes, we did. Um, from a Miss Linda White with the Corona Rotary Club. Um, she put, this is, this written public comment is addressing the Corona 4th of July parade. The officers and board of directors of the Corona Rotary Club have unanimously voted to pay for the $9,500 sponsorship of the Corona 4th of July parade. Our Independence Day Parade down Main Street gives us the opportunity to get together to show our patriotism and to thank our many heroes for the work they do to keep our great nation safe. This year, supporting our heroes has never been more important because the ranks of heroes has grown immensely. It is our hope that the restrictions will be lifted and our Corona Fourth of July Parade will celebrate its 22nd year with floats, bands, and people young and old gathered to celebrate our nation's birthday. Very good, thank you. Ms. Duarte, did we receive any requests for oral comment? Mayor, um, I don't see anybody from the public but at the moment, but I do see Ms. Michelle Wentworth has her hand raised. Sure, I was definitely gonna check with the, with the team before we closed out, but let's go ahead and uh, uh, give that minute notice. And, and then once uh, that closes, we'll hear from Ms. Wentworth. Okay. Thank you. In the interim, Jason, uh, would you mind addressing um, Vice Mayor Casillas comment about our fireworks vendor for next year, sir? Absolutely. Um, I am pleased to say um, amidst everything that was going on, um, our purchasing department did a fantastic job of making sure that we did have clauses uh, in our contracts. Uh, so we were able to um, put in language um, where if um, there were an, a president event, um, we could postpone um, and that we do have a date locked in um, for July 4th of 2021. Uh, so at least that is covered. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that next year. Um, the same thing with all the other vendors, we would just look at flipping their contracts um, and, you know, keeping that same show um, lined up. You know, we, really put a lot of work, time, effort into getting all these parties involved. Um, it would have been really great. So um, we want to make sure that, you know, if we can't do this year, that, you know, next year is just as good or even better. Thank you. Mayor, it has been a minute. We did not receive any requests. Okay, the telephonic public participation is now closed. Ms. Wentworth. Hi, yeah, I just wanted to just quickly say that, um, I agree with moving forward with as much virtual content as we can muster. I know everybody's really disappointed that this isn't working out like a regular July 4th celebration and the concerts. So I just wanted to add that in that, that whatever we could do would be um, for virtual would probably be the best thing and to recover as much as we can and planning for next year. Well, I appreciate your input. Um, so I, First of all, I definitely want to thank the team for uh, for putting in that extra work to find someone who was going to come in on July 4th and do this for us after all. That was just really amazing. I was super proud that you guys were pulling that off because I don't think anybody thought you could. Um, and then look what happens. So I'm really bummed out about it. Um, and I also 
am very thankful that our Rotary is willing to step up and and take care of this um, the parade and sponsor the parade. Um, but I just feel like, you know, tomorrow it looks like we're going into the beginning of stage two of the governor's orders, and it's not even a full stage two. It's just kind of baby steps to stuff we're kind of already doing in many cases. But um, stage four is concerts, convention centers, live audience sports, um, you know, and I just don't see us getting to that by July 4th. And even if we did, it wouldn't be, it's not going to be in the next few weeks. And now you're just really coming up against the deadline of, of putting together a lot of effort into something that you don't know if it's going to even pull through. So uh, as much as I hate to say it, I do believe that we need to just call 2020 off in a lot of areas, especially in the next few months. And it sucks, but uh, it's the sucky time. So I think that's, uh, that's the direction that I would go as well, postponing. Does anybody else have any comments in the room? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I was wondering if uh, there could be a place here where we can um, uh, partner with our commission, uh, our commissioners and Parks and Rec um, to brainstorm the ideas. I want to second Elizabeth's idea about um, uh, maybe having the team there help us uh, think about what other ways we can, you know, engage the community so the, the community can participate. And if there's any way that we can even ask you know, through social media um, or other means, or what people want to do or what they think might be a, a neat way of connecting remotely. I'd love I to see those videos. Yeah, I think we can definitely do something. Our, our team's pretty creative, um, and we'll give, them, we'll give them a little bit of time to see what we can do to uh, at least acknowledge the special day and, and our patriotism. And um, But as far as the fireworks show, and the parade and the concerts, I don't think we have much of a choice but to go ahead and cancel them for 2020. I agree. Okay, is there anybody else? Okay, uh, let's see. We are moving on to item two. For the public participating telephonically, please dial star nine or press the raise hand button if participating via the Zoom app. So raise your hand so that the city clerk is aware that you've submitted a request for oral comment. You have one minute from now to submit your request. Naomi Ramirez, will you give us an update on the City of Corona co-sponsored events? Hello, most certainly can. Um, we are here today to um, have the fiscal year 2020-21 co-sponsored events approved um, and kind of riding on the coattails of library and recreation. We know um, we're still under a lot of restrictions and many of the events for this current fiscal year have been canceled. Um, so what we're looking for in staff recommendation is for the committee to approve the um, proposed amounts with the um, allowing us to roll any unused um, funds to the next year, um, looking at it might be a while since we can um, have these events actually happen. We don't want to miss a chance on um, moving forward with the funds. Um, so that's what we have brought to you today. Um, we have many reoccurring events um, that have been approved year to year, and we have a couple new ones um, that we're hopefully excited um, will happen. <laughs> um, but that's what we have for you today. And we have 30 um, total events that have requested co-sponsorship. Um, just to name a few, we have the Day of the Child, um, Cinco de Mayo celebration, uh, Lobster Fast, um, Settlement House um, has their um, bingo and they have um, bowls, I forget the name of the event, but um, we have a couple new ones, the Corona Symphony Orchestra um, and then a softball league, or just to name a few. Okay, very cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Comments from my colleagues? Uh, yes, Ms. Ramirez, could you remind me again um, about the the process that uh, our nonprofits go through in order to secure these sponsorships? 
Yes, of course. So we do send out a request for co-sponsorship and it does, it did go um, in the newspapers. We did out a notification. So anyone that's reg uh, registered has received City of Corona notifications received the request. And we did a social media blast, which we haven't done before. Um, so we made sure to get it all on all our social media platforms. Um, we do have some requirements for the community organizations. Um, they have to promote the city of Corona. They have to enhance the quality of life um, and promote cultural and artistic awareness within the community. Um, we do have a deadline since we don't have an um, unlimited amount of money. Um, so there is a deadline uh, for when co-sponsorships are due. Um, and then we try to get as close to um, what they're requesting. We try to get as close to that um, amount as possible. But like I said, we it's a really um, popular uh, program. So uh, we've had a lot of success with it. Yeah, I know. The, and there's a lot of a lot of really great nonprofits. We're we're very very lucky um, to have such um, dedicated organizations in our city. Um, so this is this is really neat. Um, could you remind me again? Uh, is it the admin services or is it Parks and Rec? Uh, who is it that is part of the, like the selection committee? And um, and um, uh, you've already enumerated on the criteria, but is it staff or? Uh, community members part of the selection criteria? Um, we don't have a, we, anyone that um, pretty much puts in a request that reads, that meets the requirements um, is on the list. Um, we don't really single anyone out or unless it's, um, they just maybe don't meet one of the requirements. Um, we do work with all the departments throughout the city of Corona because the, these events usually touch at each department. Yeah. So we kind of all work together to make sure um, we you know what their requirements are as far as what their event is going to entail um some events require pd so we have them come in and kind of help us with um what they'll need for the event so it's really a full range of the city of corona um, working with these co-sponsored events gotcha and is the sponsorship like a written check to the organizations or is it in such in like in lieu of fees it is um, in lieu of to offset city fees, so it could be the um, use of a facility that we will cover the um, rental fee, um, or staff time is the majority of what the funds go to. Um, any permit, like a special events permit, that would be covered under co-sponsorship. Um, the use of our city seal, sometimes some organizations just need that on their flyer, so that will be approved through the co-sponsorship. Um, so it's in lieu of city fees and city services. Gotcha. So this isn't, we're not writing checks. No. Too. Wonderful. All right. Well, um, I know how, I mean, we just had the Cinco de Mayo yesterday and I know how sad everyone is. And that Cinco de Mayo parade really, it's a, it's a scholarship as well to um, support our um, young, uh, our, our young adults or young students going on to higher education. So it's, I know um, the organization that puts that together was really um, bummed that it wasn't possible to make that happen this year. So, um, and the community is too. I mean, we missed out on a really fun, fun event and the day of the child as well was another big one. So um, thank you for, for your diligence with this and thank you for um, putting it together. I see, um, I'm hoping that we can get back to normal and all of these organizations can um, put together their events in the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then. Ms. Ramirez, did we receive any written comments from the public? We did not receive any written comments. Ms. Duarte, did we receive any requests for oral comment? Yes, sir. As of now, we have received one request. Um, Mr. David Brambilla, I'll and go ahead and unmute. Before we start him, we'll start the 60 seconds too for people to call in. Go ahead. Okay, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, David. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Vice Mayor. Hi, everybody in attendance. Nice talking to you all. Good hearing um, from you, brother. Likewise, thank you. Well, as as we all mentioned, we you know we we are in uh, um, some dire times. Uh, this uh, pandemic has put a pause on everything, and uh, like mentioned, we would have we had to forego the Cinco de Mayo parade this uh, that we would have had this last weekend um you know i want to remind everybody that the the cinco de mayo celebration 
is also a long Corona tradition. We're going on, we would have had our 49th year celebration. Um, you know, it, it, we're talking about protecting um, Corona um, events and traditions. And, and we, we got to make sure that that this event, we also do our due vigilance and protect this event because, you know, in, in, in the history of this is, you know, in the past, the city of Corona used to co-sponsor us $10,000. And you know it takes about seventy five hundred dollars to put on this event, and our budget is every year has been, get, been getting cut, getting cut. To we're at the point of we're at about thirty eight hundred dollars now to put on an event. The committee has had to absorb those costs, and by absorbing those costs, that means that at the end of the day, we have to write less checks to Corona Nook Unified School District students in the form of scholarships. We've thus far written out two hundred and sixty three thousand dollars in scholarships to our youth, to our next generation of, of, of our future of Corona. So I want to um, just let you know that we really need the city's help in going back and growing our budget back to where it was, you know, where $3,800 does not even cover the PD cost. The PD cost is $4,300. Recreation and facility costs is $840. Maintenance staff and event supplies is $1,384. Um, we're really having to cut our, dig into our, our, our scholarship funds and it's getting to the point where, where this, this event is dying down and we want your help. We need you guys to help protect this event, this long Corona tradition, this long cultural event, an official U.S. holiday. It's, it's really, it's a celebration of, of Mexican American culture. You know, red, white, and blue is in the front of this parade. We have a Corona American veterans that are leading. We have business owners that are that are um, that are there to promote their business and their product and services. And more importantly, we have families there that are there to have a good day, a fun day, a Corona fun event that that really needs your guys' help. And I'm hoping that that instead of rolling over the um, the funds that weren't used this year, that we roll it over for next year because we really need this year's funds and next year's funds together to put on the sink with a mile celebration come 2020, 21. Thank you. All right. Thank you, David. Appreciate your input. And Ms. Dorte, has it been a minute? Yes, sir. Uh, sir. It has been a minute. We did not receive any other requests. Thank you. The telephonic public participation is now closed. Um, is there anything else from any of my colleagues? No, thank you. All right, and um, I'm also good with uh, the proposal. So with that, we'll call today. Anything else, Jason or Naomi, anybody? We're all good? No, we are set, thank you. All right, guys, thank you, everybody. The next Public Services Committee meeting is scheduled for June 3rd, 2020 at 3 p.m. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir.